Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got Stacy with me. We're out on the dock, the pond slap full of water, and we're going to talk about making the best sense out of the information we receive. We're going to be talking about precious metals. I have several friends that I know that are rolling their money over into annuities. Kind of, We'll talk around that a little bit. Stacy's going to talk about uh, some of the things she's seen in the precious metals market. And I even got a little news story about Canada and the asylum seekers that are coming there is unbelievable. So we're going to be all over the place, but it's going to be good information. So if you would hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell, I would appreciate it. Yeah, I wish you were here and could join us on the pier it for our evening day. talk. This is what we do a lot. Um, I'd like to start out with what's going on right now with spot prices. Let's start with that. Yeah, go ahead. Because it has been on a run lately. <laughs> He's lost his notes almost five times in the pond now. Take him out of the water. But spot price has been on a run. If you guys have seen it, you guys have been texting me. Some of you have been, you've been selling, some have been buying. But right now, I just want to tell you, as I we're talking, this is April the 11th at 7 p.m. Central Time. Silver is 28.65 spot. Gold is 23.80, so $2,380.50 spot. You guys, it has been on a run lately. So what are the premiums like? The that's, that's the strange thing because the premiums are down, right? Yeah. I know, well, junk silver, we're talking about junk silver earlier because a lot of people are starting to get interested in it. And it's smart, I think, because the premiums were like $14 the last time we had a crisis. Yeah. And now they're like two something. They were, we're running a special for two seventy five. dollars We can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that's... Um, you guys, if you hear the dogs barking, sorry, they're out on the pier with us. But we're running a special right now with Miles Franklin for $2.75 over. I want to talk about that a little bit of how actually junk silver is sold because I think some people, I had to wrap my head around how to explain it. Um, and then, I don't know, some different things that you found out. So let's get into it. Well, you want to do that towards the end? Yeah. Guys, if you're interested in owning precious metals, metals physical in your hand give her a call her phone number is 318-564-5823 always get three bids i see here are people getting ripped off every day it's ridiculous we're gonna i got to talk to the lawyer and see if we can start naming these companies out because yeah. it's really getting old guys it's just not right well just real quick then someone else just called me and they just got ripped off they paid 23 dollars in spot 27 dollars in premium for a round of silver so you guys just just don't don't let that happen to you. Let's get into the news. All right, and what's well, going real on. quick um, about Canada. So the way that we're going to devalue the currency is all of the above: government spending. And Canada doesn't. Unfortunately, uh, Ontario law, local governments cannot run budget deficits to pay for unexpected costs, leading to deficit. Uh, difficult decisions where to allocate these limited funds for the asylum seekers, overwhelming temporary shelters. Now, that's very different than what our government would do, but they can't, so or they don't. So the shelter system is operating at 300% in Canada right now. Asylum seekers are occupying 70% of the beds. More are living on the streets. Montreal, Ottawa, and Vancouver, Vancouver are also over capacity so this uh, asylum seekers arriving by air yeah, they're not run across the border you know but it, it's happening in canada too but it's going to be a little different here because our government will print they just whip it up they'll whip up funny money and pay for everything and that's kind of how i look at things you know inflation has only gotten worse i don't think it's going to get any better uh, you know, until we get into this uh, recession, depression thing, and probably it'll come down then when they kill the jobs. That's how you get inflation down. But just a heads up on Canada. Well, they were talking about even for us, they were trying to put a bill through that would stop the funding to allow them to fly the illegals in and just place them certain ways. Now, I don't think that got stopped as far as I know. And they would turn around and once they landed here, then they would just give them a credit card and or a debit card for a certain amount of money. And unfortunately, we the tax people are paying for that. And I'm not against people coming in that need help. I'm not against that. But you some they have point, to be vetted. Come on, guys. Well, at some point, though, you have to say, hey, you're taking away from our employment. Well, we can go down a rabbit hole. And we have several times on that. Yeah, I don't really want to talk about uh, immigration. I just wanted to bring that up because... Canada is going to 
reduce the temporary resident population, temporary work permits, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. I don't hear the United States doing anything. They're, they're cracking that. down then. The United States wants a complete open border. Yeah. Get as many over here as you possibly can for whatever reason. We can speculate, think through that on your own. Now, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, yesterday and today. Good, good guy. Um, he's done really well for himself. And he's pretty pretty good with uh, stock trading, and uh, he's always had a good job and invested and invested. And now he's starting to see this volatility. He's starting to see, you know, stocks going to all-time highs, war on the horizon, all these different things. And <clears throat> he told me a while back that he was getting ready to, you know, somewhat get out of the volatility. And I talked to him, uh, or he texted me today and said he was uh, rolling it all into an annuity. And I'm a little bit unfamiliar with annuities. So I had to check them out a little bit. And if you're thinking about it, or and this guy doesn't want precious metals at all. And we'll talk about that too. I've told him about it and he just doesn't want to hear it. <laughs> Some people just, you know, it hasn't happened in their lifetime. So it never will. But unfortunately it happens through history over and over. And even confiscation. We might talk about confiscation a little bit too. Because a lot of people think, well... It, you can, it can get confiscated. Absolutely it could. But there's a, some gray area there. But just real quick, the downsides to an annuity. Limited access to your funds. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, uh, they have restrictions, and you can't just go get it without a penalty, usually. He said the penalty was small, and there was no fees or charges. But a lot of times, people tell you one thing and do another, right? We see that happening with vaults sometimes. They do. Uh, loss of liquidity. Your money's locked up. You can't use it. Emergency, like if you have an emergency, you can't that just go right. around and get it real quick. And the biggest one is the inflation risk. So is the annuity going to pay enough to keep up with inflation? That's a, that's a big one too. So guys, think through that. Uh, it's an option, sure, if you want to reduce your risk to the volatility. I get it completely. Uh, but maybe think about it, you know, maybe think about having some precious metals. Uh, it's, it's starting to go for a rip. And I imagine all the people that have bought since we've been around are happy they did, you know. Well, annuities, you guys, are basically an investment in bonds, stocks, and all these different things. And it's just a, an insurance policy that from what I understand, I don't have one personally, but I've talked to many of you guys that do, that you're guaranteed a certain amount. There's certain tiers. There's like one, two, three, four, depending on what you choose. It's gonna be a high risk, a low risk, and that depends on the money that you get per month. But it's still involved in stocks, bonds, and different things like that. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't know. I know people that have them. It's your choice. You just got to know, just like everything else, you got to know what you're getting into. I think that's the key thing. And you, when you're high pressured, sold into something and you don't really know what you're doing, I think that's the key. Yeah, just not being able to get to my money is the, the problem. That is the, always... The, the third party risk thing. That's you know. always a concern. It just it, it is even with IRAs, with self-directed IRAs, when you can't get to your precious metals. It's a third party. There's always a risk on that, and that's been a concern. Well, the reason I brought up annuities in the first place is because I wanted to know what happens if the majority of people that are invested in stocks uh, pull their money out and put it into annuities. So I dug around a little bit, reduced volatility, annuities provide a fixed income, which means the individuals are less exposed to ups and downs. This could lead to a reduction in overall market volatility. So the, the, it would affect the, the overall market, be less volatile, right? That's a good thing, maybe. Decreased liquidity. This could result in a decrease in liquidity in the economy as individuals have less ready available cash to spend. So they can't get to it if they wanted to. That is correct, without a fee. It could lead to a decrease in demand for stocks. This could potentially impact the stock prices and overall market performance. So there's a lot of, there's a trickle down effect. When you start seeing people run to safety, I think that's what's happening to precious metals. There's always, you know, something else that kind of happens with it. Increased reliance on insurance companies. Annuities are typically offered by insurance companies. 
And if the majority of people hold their money in annuities, it could lead to an increased concentration on wealth and power in the insurance company, insurance industry. So just a few things to think through as we enter this strange environment when it comes to annuities and everything, really. Now, how would you like to go from here? You want to talk about confiscation? Well, let's talk just a little bit about what's, before we talk about that, let's talk about what the banks have been doing with buying up precious metals just in January of 2024. So you guys, well, I want to clarify, maybe for him too, we're not saying annuities are bad or good. We're just saying you need to do your research, just like self-directed IRAs to purchase precious metals. There's pros and cons. You've got to do your research. You've got to figure out, you know exactly the fine print that you know what you're getting into. But I ran across, I called Chris earlier today because I was talking about JP Morgan and what's going on with them and different banks and stuff like that. And you guys, we have seen, and it's, I'll put every article that I'm discussing, I will put it in the description, a link of it. You can read it for yourself. It's on Twitter. Uh, well, this one isn't. I haven't posted this one yet. Right. We've seen tremendous gold buying on the back, back of central banks. And more recently, there's been retail buying in China. China, India, different places like that. And I want to just give you a little bit of a stat. Central banks accumulated more gold in January starting 2024. They added 300, no, 39 tons. And that is, Chris, do the math for me, 1,410,957 ounces. That's how many the central banks acquired just in January of 2024. Now, come on, you guys. This is where I say the banks tell you what they're doing. Just like the banks were telling the other day that they were still selling off tech stocks and AI stocks. They said, no, JP Morgan, I think another bank came out and said, no, we're going to sell off some of that and we're going to go into some smaller businesses, maybe energy, different things like that. The banks tell you, if you just watch what they're doing, they tell you what they're doing. They're telling you right now, they're buying precious metals. China's, their economy, they, they ask them to please go out, their government to the people. India, they tell them, please go buy precious metals. So there you go. Just that much in the banks in January. They do. They do tell you what to do, uh, tell you what they're doing. Like the wealthiest people on the planet telling you they're holding more cash than they ever have. Like Warren Buffett. Jeff Bezos selling his own stock. Elon yep. Musk. All these guys are... Jeff Bezos' ex-wife. Meta boy. They're all moving yep. out. And for some reason, everybody just keeps on going. They're following the herd, you know. It's going to be pretty wild to see things turn down. Um, it's already starting to happen a little bit. So I want to talk about the confiscation, and then I want to talk a little bit about junk silver because junk silver kind of died off for a while, but I'm getting a lot of people asking about it again. So I'd like to hit on both of those. That's fine, it. but uh, why don't we talk a little bit about the silver confiscation? Did you know that happened? Because I didn't know that happened. Uh, it was a the delivery of all silver bullion to be minted into coins by Roosevelt one year after the gold confiscation. So this is the coins she's about to tell you about that were minted when he said uh, the deliver of all silver bullion uh, to be minted into coins in 1934. It was called Executive Order 6814. So if you want to look it up and check it out, um, that's the coin she's talking about. So go ahead. Well, anything but pre-1965 pre is 90% silver. But here gets the confusion part. Most silver is sold by the ounce, right? Mm -hmm. But this one's not. It's sold by dollar face value. And a combination, and I'll put this link also in the description, any combination of silver, dimes, silver quarters, half dollars, that add up to one dollar in face value contains a total of 0.715 troy ounces. So that's why whenever we do the math, we do the spot plus the premium, you do it times 0.715, and that's what you will pay for $1 face value. That's the best way I know how to put it. The simplest way if you want to buy four quarters, 10 dimes. We've got a video on it where we broke it down. I know, but that's buried probably in like 100 well, um, maybe past I'll, videos. I'll put it up here somewhere. So if you're interested, you can watch the junk silver video or constitutional silver. I don't want to throw rocks at junk silver. But if you're interested, contact me. I also do an email list every Tuesday, Wednesday, Email me. My phone number, as we said, is 318-564-5823. My email's in the description. I will be happy. I do not sell it to a third party. I will email you myself directly, and you will get a price list, and you can compare with anyone else. Yeah, just make sure you send the email to the number that's on the screen. That way you can get the price list, and you can take it with you and try to get the best deal. Yep. 
And don't get scammed by somebody calling you telling you they found some shipwreck coins and they're double the, the cost they should be. Yeah. I talk to them. Every time they call me, I answer, like, yeah, what do you got for sale? And it's some kind of high pressure, fast talking guy that won't shut up. And usually they claim they're a Christian. And they Sorry, usually I just hang up that. on them. Yeah, be careful with the faith based companies, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so I went down this rabbit hole about confiscation because the whole deal was where do you, what do you do with your money, right? You, you know, we, we always talk about the wealthy does like 10% of precious metals, uh, their wealth and precious metals mm -hmm. for, for an insurance policy. And that's worked out in the past. And it's also the gold and, and housing, precious metals and housing gets out of whack. And it takes so many ounces to buy a house. And then later on, it takes so many less ounces to buy a house. And I think we're kind of there as, uh, as everything happens with the real estate and the gold and all this stuff. So we'll see how that plays out. But the confiscation in 1933 under Roosevelt, that was Executive Order 6102. And I'm trying to go kind of quick, not bore you with it. But just know it's happened in Australia in 1959. That was called the Banking Act. It's happened in the UK in 1966. No, I'm sorry, 1959 Banking Act in Australia, 1966 in the UK. The Constitution did not stop the uh, confiscation in 1933. Just they can do anything. The people that are in charge at the very bottom, their objective is to maintain control. That when I got done with all my notes, that's what I wrote at the very bottom. And they're going to come up with all kind of I have a feeling we're going to be called hoarders. That's what they used to call it. That's what they called it in every single time. Be a patriot. Don't be a hoarder. You know, give us your gold. And food. And if you don't, you could face $10,000 fines and 10 years in jail or both. Mm -hmm. That was in the United States, 1933 confiscation. Now, and it's, it's probably odd to call it a confiscation. What did they call it? A, it's actually what it was. But it was. Oh, they wanted else. you to turn your. They wanted you to turn it yeah. in, and nobody was really prosecuted. But there was a lot of uh, patriotic people back then, too. And a lot of people just didn't do it. Now, it occurred during times of crisis, and every single time it's happened through history, governments banned private gold ownership. Confiscations often lasted decades. So we're talking long times of this, uh, this confiscation. You you know, it's illegal to own it. But here's the, the th oh, Italy did too. I had a little note here. Italy did gold for the fatherland. Mm -hmm. It's always some type of, you know, they you're a patriot. You a love lot. your country if you do this. Yeah. But it's funny, and Mike Maloney mentioned this. He said hoarding versus saving. You know, if you save their money, it's called saving. If you save real money, it's called hoarding. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Now, solutions. The thing is, if you, if you have your stocks and bonds and mutual funds, they, they're going to inflate that away. That's, that's how they're going to do that. That's how they're going to control all that. But they don't really want you to have real money. Just know that. Know they want to be in control of all the currency, all the money. They want to be in total control. Everybody knows that. So what do you do? Well, the good news is the confiscation didn't happen until like four years after the Great Depression. So it was a long time, you know, afterwards. And you're probably going to have time to move it around, you know, trade it for land, uh, you know, whatever. Pay your taxes. Pay taxes. That's a lot of, a lot of people. Barter. Yeah. And, and they will, they're supposed to pay you uh, if they did want it want to confiscate it they're supposed to pay you what it's worth now if it's anything like what happened in 1933 they gave 20 bucks for it nine months later they raised the price to 35 dollars which immediately devalued the currency they gave the people for their gold by 40 <laughs> percent that's crazy it is it's a rip off and there's a whole bunch of stuff about uh, proving you're a coin collector. You know, you can say if you're doing the pre-33 thing and you, and you can prove you're a coin collector, then you're able to keep it in some instances through history. 
but every time the main thing is, every time it's when the government's in a real bind and, you know, they can't pay their bills. They, so are they, you, they lose control. So, okay. Because I was not expecting to go down this rabbit hole. This is supposed to be like a 12 minute video, but here we go. We're at 20 minutes now. Um, are, so you, are you proposing that there's a possibility that they could try to do the confiscation thing again then? I'm saying we are entering the Thunderdome and anything goes. It is, there is willy nilly, nobody has any idea what's going to happen. And through history, this has happened. Okay. There's no way around that. You can't argue that. There's, you know, yes, things are different, but uh, the people that crave power and all the money are the same. That evil spirit's in all of them. And so how are they going to know that you actually have it? Well, that's, there's a lot, it's like I said, there's a lot of gray air. That, you know, how are they going to know? Uh, well, if you vault it, they pretty okay, much vaulting, report that. That's, that's a different thing. Uh, you know, and if you get caught with a piece of it, is it worth your life or, t you know, 10 years of your life in prison? You know, what are they going to do? I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying, I think there's going to be a time where people are really going to wish they had it and they're going to be able to sell it for real assets, pay taxes, uh, you know, I know people right now, I talked to a guy today that traded his gold for um, an RV park. He you did. Know? He did for he, a down payment. And he also has done some other stuff with it. Yeah. And, you know, he uses it uh, like that. So that's the thing. There is no safe, this is the, this is the way to do it. You got to think, that's why I'm bringing up annuities, precious metals, uh, stocks, uh, trading. Trading is uh, a really, I think, a really good way to be able to short the market on the way. I, sh I shorted J.P. Morgan this morning, this afternoon. And, you know, that's going to be kind of nice to well, be able to have that control. Poop, poop, get in and out. They just got some investigation on them or anyway. Yeah, well, Jamie but, Demon. Well, I, they're one of them, actually. J.P. Morgan, Citibank, a few others. They're saying that silver in 2024 is going to go to $30. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think that's just the start. Yeah, I think that's what they're when saying. people start figuring out real money, which I think they are, people are running safety. That's why precious metals are going up. And heaven for, forbid something bad happened to Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't know what would happen. Precious metals if something bad happened to Bitcoin. Because you all know I'm a fan of Bitcoin. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> if not. <laughs> so guys, let us know what you think. Um, uh, we're trying to muddle through this together and try to provide information that that you can research on your own and go through the articles that'll be in the description and check out the Twitter Financial Prepper, uh, Financial Prepper PPR on the end. It'll be in the description as well. And pay attention. It's getting pretty wild and. It's just fixing you a little worse. So with that being said, have an awesome, awesome day, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for coming on. Yeah.